Hear that sound? Spring is in the air. It's time to lighten up with a simple and delicious cheat pan dinner. So beautiful, the green, it just makes me happy. A crowd-pleasing chicken Caesar wrap. It's indulgent and decadent, but healthy. Explore the hottest spring food trends. Move over avocado toast, because there's a new player in town. And the best spring cleaning trends. How to declutter that kitchen junk drawer in five minutes or less. That's next. Let's dish. The kitchen has always been at the center of my world because life is more delicious when it's full of food and fun. <laughs> Everybody knows me as a culinary expert and food judge on television, but also I'm a mom trying to get dinner on the table. From Hollywood to home, I bring Southern sweet and Caribbean heat, and I'm not afraid to stir the pot. Good food, good friends, good dish. <laughs> I know, we do. We have a little skirt situation to oh. in here, don't we? <laughs> but I definitely did the big like slide from the front door. Because oh. <laughs> <laughs> you led me this way and I just followed your lead. Do you hear that noise? The birds are chirping, the weather is warming, and the flowers are blooming. And all of that can only mean one thing. Spring is in the air. Yes. Come That's across. right. <laughs> It is this time of year I've been waiting for for what feels like an eternity, and it seems like everyone is craving some lighter meals, fresh spring flavors. Oh, Break yeah. us out of our winter doldrums. Yes. Oh, yes. And today, we're giving you what you want because we've got light, easy spring recipes and a side of cleaning hacks that I know you need. <laughs> and first, let's get you fed, okay? Mm -hmm. You got to fill that stomach. Mm -hmm. So we are kicking things off with our first dish. It's a special twist, and we make it It's an easy weeknight meal, and it kind of feels a little fancy. That's why we got on our long dresses today. That's right. <laughs> no. Dressed up for you. Yes, we did. And this dish. Now, Gail, I want you to dish the details on our first spring recipe. Ooh, she looks so pretty. Pistachio crusted chicken salmon. Mm, oh, oh my. Just look like spring. Oh. It really does. I love this dish because if there's anyone who is not a big salmon fan or who isn't a fish fan and you want them to eat more fish or you just for health reasons want it more of it in your diet, this mm -hmm. will definitely hit the mark. It is so flavorful and it has this beautiful pistachio crust. So easy to make. Okay. So this is it. It's all in the timing. I'm gonna start by roasting some of these baby beautiful new potatoes, which are so springy. I have about a half a pound here that I've cut, put cut side down, tossed in a little oil, salt and pepper. They went in the oven at 400 uh, for about 15 minutes till they were sort of partially cooked. I'm gonna leave that oven on while I make the rest of the dish, okay? Yes. Cause it's okay. gonna go back in a moment. Would you start by making me a softened little compound butter? That's a fancy yeah. word for a butter that's been mixed with other flavors and seasonings, in this case, lemon zest and tarragon. I'm gonna oh. just put a big pinch of salt in there because it's unsalted butter. And then I'm gonna make my pistachio crust. I have some chopped toasted pistachios in here. I'm gonna add some panko breadcrumbs, a little Ooh. melted butter. Ooh. I like your style there. Right? Buttery, crunchy, delicious. Again, some seasonings, some salt here. I'm gonna toss that all together and that's gonna go on top of the fish with that beautiful compound butter. Now the thing about this butter that makes it so amazing is I'm gonna spread it on the fish and then I'm gonna put the, the, this nutty crust over it and it becomes basically like self-basting. As the butter melts, yeah. it keeps the fish moist in the oven mm -hmm. and it infused it with so much flavor. So hold on for a moment. Okay. Meanwhile, Daphne, you have some asparagus. I do. The most quintessential spring vegetable out there. And I'm going to snap it to release just those sort of tougher, woodier stems mm -hmm. and then just because, Gail, it's something I have to say about your cooking in general, which I am obsessed with, is it's always loose and like easy like this, but somehow turns out to be so elevated looking and fancy. I'll take it. So I put the <laughs> bias cut on the asparagus just for Oh, you. that was very <laughs> yeah, fancy. You know. So I'm just gonna give it a little bit of olive oil, sure, and sure, if you sure. wouldn't mind tossing that around, seasoning it is like it salt I time? You, it always is salt time. Show. Thank you very much. <laughs> Lovely. Give that a toss, and while you're tossing and it, I've got I'm gonna scallions come back. and lemon in here as well with you. Oh, that's right, yeah. scallions and those slices of lemon, mm. which are all gonna make this feel so bright and fresh. Okay. Oh. Now, I have this butter that you graciously made for me earlier. It's softened. The key also to always putting anything into a butter is make sure it's at room temperature. I'm gonna take a little bit of it, 
and I'm just going to spread it on top of the fish. It looks like a lot, it's really not. I'm using, you know, probably less than half a tablespoon um, on each fish. And that's just gonna kind of wow. become the, the herby lemony glue mm -hmm. that makes the whole thing sing. When that tarragon starts to melt mm. into the flesh mm. of the salmon, oh, why am I getting excited? Because it's exciting. <laughs> it is. And then I'm going to just take some of this, thank you, pistachio mixture, and just press it on. You don't have to be perfect about it. It's really, really easy. And then I'm just going to take this fish knife. By the way, the flexible fish spatula is one of my absolute favorite tools in the kitchen. If you don't have one, it's like very inexpensive and so useful. I'm gonna spread these out. You're getting your side and your main all done at once. Yep, put it all in. on. Now the beauty is that because you've already cooked your potatoes halfway through, when you put this in the oven, at still at 400, for about 15, 18 minutes, it'll all be perfectly cooked. That's the exact time you need to cook right. the salmon and the vegetables. And the one thing I'm trying to avoid doing is covering the gorgeous crust with any of this yes. topping because we want that golden brown, crisp and delicious, leaving our veggies room to breathe. Delightful. Here we go. go. So while you pop that in the oven, Gail, I do sometimes hear, like when people are learning how to cook fish, learning how to make it at home, or have had it in a restaurant, maybe didn't love what they, or didn't love what they, when they then tried to make it at home, it didn't taste the same way. It's, you know, sometimes they say they don't like the look of that white stuff that can come out yeah. when you cook your salmon Let's at home. Let's just look at this for one oh, second. Oh my goodness. That is how you do it. So beautiful, the green, it just makes me happy. It's like sunshine. Delicious. <laughs> All right, keep going. I want to know about the albumin because well, I do think it's something that people... But this is now, this is so glorious. I don't even want to talk about That's that anymore. Perfect. But I will just say this. The little bits of white that do come out sometimes are called albumin. It's a protein that comes out of the fish. When, usually when you overcook it, guys. So it heats up, it loses moisture, the white stuff squishes out. It's not that beautiful, obviously. Mm -hmm. It's definitely not harmful, but it's just not that appealing. And honestly, this is the number one trick when you are cooking fish at home. The more you cook it, the fishier it tastes, which is a sort of shocking thing to a lot of people. You think you're gonna cook the fishiness out, you are not. The less you cook the fish, the more mild and marine and just like the sea it's going to taste. One way to avoid overcooking your fish is to remember that anything coming hot out of the oven is gonna continue to cook even after it comes off the heat. Mm -hmm. That residual heat carries through. Um, so take it out a little bit before it's done and then using a gorgeous crust like Gail has here with this pistachio panko combo disguises any you know leaks that might happen and of course locks in tons of delicious flavor. A little healthy, a lot decadent, mm -hmm. really delicious. The flavors are all here. Mm -hmm. As promised all throughout the show that we will be sharing cleaning hacks from our latest social media <laughs> obsession, mom that loves to clean. Here's a great tip to put your mop to work. Hi ladies of the good dish. I hear you guys are spring cleaning. Did you guys know that you could clean everything with your mop? It's as simple as this. Hop on a new mop head and I will show you what to do. Make sure you wring your mop out really well so there's no drips. You can easily clean your walls, ceilings, cabinets, baseboards, and trim. You literally can clean it all with your mop. When we come back, we will find out what a nutritionist eats when she wants something light but still hearty. Mm. Plus, her gut-friendly ingredient that not only is creamy and delicious, but could actually help with bloat. Plus, what TikTok is calling the healthier, cooler version of avocado toast. It's a fight. Oh, wow. Stay with us. Like something you saw on the show today? We're dishing all the details on The Good List. All the recipes, important tips, and tricks, all in one place. So stay tuned until the end of the show when we'll share The Good List QR code. You can scan to send it all right to your phone. Welcome back to The Good Dish. Today we are talking spring cleaning and it's not just about your pantries and your closets. Registered dietitian and celebrity nutritionist Carrie Glassman joins us now with a creamy, delicious, hearty meal idea that can actually clean your belly. I love this, we're doing the inside cleaning too. Before we dive into this delicious looking recipe, tell everybody why it's so important that we maintain digestive health and good digestive health and what we're gonna do to clean it today. 
Okay, so your gut actually has its own nervous system, which is called the enteric nervous system. And it's so important that it's actually referred to as the second brain. Right. And its main job is to regulate digestion, but it also sends signals up to the brain. And you've probably all heard of the microbiome. Maybe you have, maybe you haven't. I think but the microbiome. Hot topic in the last couple of years for ex sure. Exactly, <laughs> is what contains trillions, yes, actually trillions of microbes, including good and bad bacteria. And it's the health of your microbiome that is linked to everything from good digestive health, to reducing inflammation, sure. to supporting our immune system, which obviously is on everyone's mind, yes. to also doing things like the, even helping our mood and our mental health. Skin. Yes. Yeah, skin Anti-aging. Oh, exactly. It. Yeah. So it's really important to pay attention to our gut health. And of course, no better time than the spring. Let's clean out. What does it mean to clean out your gut? What, and how are we gonna do that today? Well, you wanna start with incorporating plant foods that are high in fiber, but also fermented foods. And that's mm. what I'm gonna share with you today. Exciting. One of my favorite fermented foods is kefir. So kefir is just fermented milk, right? Mm -hmm. So it's very similar to yogurt, but it has a thinner consistency. It has a wider diversity of probiotics. Oh, I didn't so know it's that. even better for your gut health. So one of my favorite ways, and your kids might even like this too, to incorporate kefir into your diet is you can always add it to a smoothie or something, but I like making a dressing with it. And you can use it as a dip for vegetables, or you can use it like I'm going to use it today in a avocado kefir dressing for a chicken Caesar wrap. Oh, so oh, let's get started. All right. That. Like that. That okay, so your point. Yeah, so and you can My kids love a Caesar. Yeah, exactly. All kids love Caesar salads, right? <laughs> okay, so let's start with you, Daphne. Can you mash that avocado for me? Okay, and actually you, Gail, why don't you start chopping that romaine? I never had Okay, and Jamika, you can, you can grate that. some Parmesan over there. Of course. Yeah, I'm just gonna stand back here and watch. Yeah, <laughs> that's how we do it. No, oh, sorry. Word, but. We can add, now add in the kefir. Mm -hmm. Just over here. Don't want to waste any of your gorgeous yeah, let's avocado. Not waste that avocado. Okay. So add the kefir in, and then we're going to add some olive oil. Mm. Okay. And look, guys, just so you can see, it really is the consistency of kind of just loose, looser yogurt. Exactly. Delicious. And you can, of course, blend this, but I choose not to because I like to keep my recipe simple. I like yes. to keep my cleanup simple. I don't want more things to clean up. Okay. So now you can add some olive oil and some garlic. Get your bicep working while you're making the Caesar salad. Exactly. A little lemon juice. Okay, so now I'm gonna take, okay, that's perfect, so that our dressing is ready. Let's take this romaine over here, throw it in here. Perfect, Ooh, I'm gonna add delicious. pepita seeds, so instead oh. of croutons, just to give a little crunch, where you're also getting some minerals and some extra you know, protein and fiber. That's we're gonna so smart. Yeah, mix mm -hmm. this up over here. I just wanna tell people, I just tasted this dressing. I, I wanted to describe it to you. It is tangy, but right. still so creamy and rich feeling. You're not missing having tons of extra cheese in here. You're getting the gratification of a sultry, delicious salad dressing, but you're doing it in a way that's actually fueling the good bacteria in your gut. Exactly, and you're getting healthy this. fat from the avocado and the calcium and the protein, and what I love is it feels indulgent and rich. Mm -hmm. So let's add that over here. Okay, so now Just it goes, a little, yeah, just, yeah, not even probably all of it, just a little bit of it, yeah, a maybe more. a little more. Perfect. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna mix this up over here. So look at this, it looks like a creamy, rich Caesar, and you even have a, the crunch from that. the pepita yes. seeds. Yes. Yeah, I want it, Gil, I want you to, I, I want I'm, you to I'm, become I'm a kefir lover. Yeah, I'm okay. sincerely. Okay, so now we've got our Caesar mixed up over here. I'm gonna grab, and this is a, this is actually a sprouted grain tortilla. You can obviously use any kind of tortilla you want, but I love this sprouted grain one. Okay, so now I'm just gonna add my Caesar right here. And this, I think we made enough to make two. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna add some grilled chicken, here, I'm pop that on you. top. All right, make one with me, perfect. Oh and then we are just gonna roll <laughs> this up. And here we go. Now, I don't really use make my roll-ups here looking pretty. <laughs> I like to just stuff them and make yes. them feel indulgent. So it's indulgent and decadent, but healthy. Wow. The nuttiness of those pepitas popping through. Delicious nice faux mm. Caesar dressing. Gosh. You would not know it's not a full Caesar if I didn't see you make the whole right? recipe through. It, it's, it's just like you described, very tangy. And I'm like, this is good for me. I can't believe this. Right. This is really well, good. Well, it's almost like you cut down on the lemon juice that you would usually use because you have that right. acidity and tang from the exactly. kefir, which is pretty cool. Exactly. Right. <laughs> okay, so now you can find this entire recipe on gooddishtv.com. And up next, big food trend alert. Move over avocado toast, because there's a new player in town, and this health trend claims to be even more delicious. And Carrie's showing us how to make it when we come back. Is it possible? Ah, is it possible? Find out. Possible. <laughs> I love this salad.
back with celebrity nutritionist Perry Glassman. And just like fashion, food trends come and go. So the question we're asking today is, are these fun trends that are claiming to be kind of healthy actually worth the hype? And do they actually taste good? We are putting them to the test today, uh, starting with ube. Okay, have you seen this lovely look? It kind of looks like a purple potato, but... It is sweet and delicious. Look, also look at that gorgeous it's color. It's so color. pretty. Oh yes. my gosh, so Where, pretty. There you are. Hello. Um, <laughs> and it's it's funny because it obviously starts looking it starts as a potato, but we've seen it coming up as ice cream, as bread pudding, as cookies. It's the sweet potato that goes to a million different sweet places. Um, so. I mean, first of all, tell us why ube is healthy for us. Okay, so ube is healthy for us because it is, like you said, it's a type of purple potato. It comes from the Philippines. It's like all potatoes. It is a good source of carbohydrates, mm -hmm. fiber, all kinds of vitamins and minerals. And especially, it has the compounds anthocyanins. Anthocyanins are what makes berries colorful, right? Ah. So anthocyanins are a powerful antioxidant, which are highly anti-inflammatory, which we know is important for us. And so they're really a very, very healthy food on its own, in right. its whole real That's form. Our next <laughs> so what happens when we add it with butter and sugar and condensed milk? And exactly. <laughs> so it becomes something beautiful like these cookies. But is it really healthy in that form? Not really. Right. It's kind of like taking French fries and sprinkling a little chia seeds on it. You're still <laughs> eating French fries. <laughs> I haven't tried that trick yet. I, gotta, I, gotta, I, I mean, get on that. You may get the bonus chia nutrients, but you're really eating fries. So when you're eating a cookie, just know you're eating a pretty cookie. So, yeah. but by the way, there's a time and a place to indulge, but no, it's an indulgence. But if you want to reap the benefits mm -hmm. of those anthocyanins mm -hmm. and all the other great nutrients in the potato, you can find it in different grocery stores in, um, in its whole form like this and bake it like you'd bake a potato. Add a little grass-fed butter, a little cinnamon, and it is delicious. So good. Yeah, because I've been indulging over yeah. here <laughs> while you've been talking. And you're absolutely right. Eating it as just a plain baked ube, but I mean, it just tastes like a starchy sweet potato, right. but it's a very subtle, subtle sweetness to it. And then I have it in a bread pudding form. How's that? So, it's, mm. it's warm, it's, I mean, bread pudding, can mm -hmm. you go wrong? Mm. I'm right. like, I forgot that there was an ube in there. I'm like, this is delightful, <laughs> I love this. Exactly. But yes, I Back to my I am, french fry you're analogy. You're right, I'm missing <laughs> all the goodness from it when I just mask it in so many, but th it's fun though. By right. all means, have fun with it, but yeah, I'm but not that, doing anything that's great. That's exactly it though. It matches my outfit too. But <laughs> have fun with it, have fun with it. If you are gonna indulge in something sweet, mm -hmm. make it fun like that. Absolutely. I, that's how you should enjoy it. I will say the cookie's really good, though. It is I'm really good. good. Yeah. It is <laughs> really good. Mm. All right. The next health food trend I want to talk about is a custard yogurt toast that has become a TikTok star. Here's how it's made. Today, I tried the viral custard toast. You're going to need bread, Greek yogurt, eggs, fruit, and maple syrup. Add together all the ingredients on the screen, optional lemon zest and juice, and give it a whisk. Flatten your bread and pour it on in. Top with your favorite fruit, I did a lemon blueberry toast. Air fry at 350 for 12 minutes. Hope you enjoy. I kind of feel like it's like a French toast remix, it, but sort of interesting. How do you feel about the yeah. custard toast trend, Carrie? Yeah, so it's funny. I, when I first saw the video, I said, hmm, this is kind of interesting. I had to give it a shot. Like, I like to try yes. all these trends. I don't jump on board for most of these trends, I have to say, but this one I really liked. Mm -hmm. And I like it because many people that like a toast, like an avocado toast in the morning, they want something hearty. I personally, I like sourdough toast a lot in the morning because I like something hearty, but if you want a change of pace instead of getting the healthy fats and the fiber from the avocado and you want something sweet instead of savory going for something like this you're getting that egg you're getting the yogurts you're getting more protein and calcium mm -hmm. and you're getting the berries so i liked it as a nice change of pace i kind of liked it too i thought that the custardy adds like a richness and i am a real egg person in the morning so i like that yeah. although i think you're right it's like it's more like a french toast yeah yes. than an avocado toast so yes you there know people want to give all kinds of weird names to things happening yeah. on tiktok and it does make it sticky and make me want to watch so kudos you, you won <laughs> you did it uh, make sure to check out carrie's nutrition coaching courses on her site nutritiouslife.com slash bnc carrie thank you so much for joining us for your delicious so welcome salad wrap that was so good for talking us through how to indulge healthily and maybe not so healthily all right coming up how to declutter that kitchen junk drawer in five minutes or less and as we go to break another viral cleaning hack from danielle the mom that loves to clean
Here's another cleaning hack for you. Let me show you what I can clean using just this. Add some dish soap, rubbing alcohol and water and you're ready to go. Get the worst stains ever out of clothing. Spray some of the mixture on, sit and rinse and it's gone. If you have hair dye stains or purple shampoo stains in your tub, spray some on, let it sit and scrub and look how shiny and clean it gets and I love it. Shine up your dishware, wash your dishes with this and look how shiny it gets. can get a little messy, and so can your kitchen junk drawers. All right, I know that's a little deep for y'all, but <laughs> unlike your life, we can declutter your drawer in five minutes flat. Organization expert Pia Thompson has taken junk drawers from this to this. Uh, oh, oh my, amazing. okay, fix my life. Okay, now can <laughs> she do the same for you? Welcome, Pia. Thank you for being here. Now you are trained on the Comari method of organizing from Marie Kondo. And so can you explain what that is for those that may not know? Please break Absolutely. this down. Absolutely. So the first thing is that you tidy by category and not by location, right? So let's say we're doing clothing. You know, you can have clothing in your bedroom closet, you can absolutely have clothing in your hallway closet, in your coat closet, right. by your front door, right? And so we do it by category, not by location, so that you can make a fulsome decision around what you wanna own. And then the second thing is you're doing it in a certain order. So you're going clothes, books, paper, kimono, which is Japanese for miscellaneous, Marie Kondo's Japanese, and then you're doing sentimental items. And the reason for that is because as you go through and you're making these decisions, oh. you are learning how to make choices better around yes. what you own. So by the time you get to sentimental items, you are an expert. And as you can imagine, sentimental items really pull on your heartstrings, and yes. that can be really difficult for people. So that's the reason why the order matters so much. What I find the problem is gonna be that all of those top categories are gonna then fall into sentimental items. <laughs> <laughs> I get to sentimental items and I have everything, I of course. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, indeed. Teach us your ways. Of course, of course. And then the last part is you ask, does this spark joy? Mm -hmm. Which you may have heard before. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so whether something sparks joy means does it thrill you? Does it give you a little, you know, does it, does it increase your energy, essentially? All right, let's get started. I have here a drawer that's pretty typical in a lot of ways of probably a lot of people's houses. Yep. Uh, it makes me nervous to look in this drawer. It's full of batteries and scissors and papers a and lot. receipts. There's a stapler. I don't know, like there is someone's house keys. You might need those. You might need those. Possibly car keys. Uh, okay, so so where do we even start? You get a car. Yes, you have a car. home with these now. So the first thing you do is you empty the drawer out completely. Okay. Right? Right in, yes. Oh, into here? Absolutely. Oh, go okay. right into here. I feel like I'm going to just take out the scissors first because I'm a safety girl. All right. And that Let's felt do. like a really Very dangerous smart. Yes. Thing to Gail. Do yes. <laughs> go for it, Gail. I'm a rule follower. Uh, yeah. yeah. Woo! Yes. Wow. <laughs> oh, my word. Wow. Okay. Yes. Perfect. That's Perfect. Gratifying. Yes. Okay. Now, what do we do? Okay, <laughs> now it's Gail's dream to make organized piles. And it, I mean, I have to say, it does oh, excite man. me. I will right. do this. Yes. For okay, you. So we're gonna leave you here to make some fun organized piles. <laughs> Don't get too carried away. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh yeah, I'll take the drawer. Okay, okay, all right. Oh, I'll get carried away. All that's right. Okay. So organized have, piles. Yes, have... organized piles by category. Okay. Okay, yep. all the scissors together, perfect, Gail, I yes. This. Okay. Yes, this is like kindergarten, school. but I'm it kindergarten. Is. Yep. That it we is. all need to go back to. Leave me to my pile. All right. interrupt her. I'm <laughs> taking the empty drawer with me, and what am I gonna do with this lovely drawer now? We're lining the drawer next. Okay, okay. Okay. So I should warn you ahead of time that I am the least crafty of our three musketeers. Okay, that's all well and good. But I think oh, you well can guide God. me through it. Yes, absolutely. So what we're gonna do is, you can use this peel and stick wall. Right. Ah, yes. that's Yes. Nice using things you have in your home. You don't have to go to the store and buy anything. Okay, so peel and stick wallpaper. Here we go. So you just cut and measure that and... Absolutely, that's, you that's, cut that's and measure the that. the hardest part for me to get that right. Yes. I think an X-Acto knife is gonna spark joy for you. Exactly. There you go, yes. Okay. And it's probably something Gail's got over there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and perfect. And what's the purpose of lining the bottom of my drawer? The purpose of lining the drawer is so that you don't scratch the bottom of the drawer with anything you may have in your 
utility drawer, okay. right? Okay. And then also so that the place that you're, you're using as your organizing spot also sparks joy. Right, Aww. so you wanna make sure not only the things that you have spark joy, but also that the place you're putting it away in sparks joy so that you'll be more inclined to stay tidy. This is beautiful inspiration. So now you, we have to create partitions. Mm -hmm. So our grouped objects that we're working on, it can have a little place to live, right? Absolutely, yes. So now, of course, I think like everybody's home, there's no shortage of you know, containers and stores, but you want to save a little money, yes. you show us what we what our options could be if we want to use what we have at home. Absolutely. So you can use an ice cube tray, right? Mm. And you can store like small pins and things in here and it's already partitioned, right? So that makes it so easy. I like that. Mm -hmm. And then what else could we do? Okay, so you can use little boxes you have at home, right? So maybe you've gotten some jewelry. You can use the old jewelry boxes. You can paint those as well, okay? <laughs> And it's beautifully done, by the way. Yeah, aren't they amazing? And so again, that really does allow you to open the drawer and see something like that looks beautiful, and then you want to put your things back into them. I could definitely <laughs> occupy my kids for at least thirty minutes with this. Yes. Okay, so, okay, yes. and that, that, way, that might be away. worth absolutely. <laughs> that might be worth organizing the drawer right there. Okay. Like, oh, <laughs> well, and then the cereal box too. What are we yeah, doing with this? the bottom of the cereal box. Okay. Oh, yes. Man. This was the, I didn't think of cutting oh, that exactly. off. Exactly, oh, cut that, that off. Genius right there. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. all right. Gail, how's it coming on over there with the piles? I am having the time of my life over <laughs> here. I just <laughs> want to say I think our producer Kathy would be especially proud of the organization I'm doing. I think this is, you know, visionary. Visionary. <laughs> you really <laughs> understand the assignment. Well, Gail doesn't have to go to therapy this week because <laughs> she got to sort her piles. But we do have to take a quick break. And when we come back, we are putting that stuff back in the drawer using our DIY container. And if your drawers are so taken over by your cutting boards and they're hard to take out, we have a $3 solution to get them tucked away that you won't believe. <laughs> I literally I know. I know. It's so hey, ladies of the Good Dish, I'm here in the client's home about to organize this dinnerware. Beautiful work. Look at this. That was organizing expert Pia Thompson, who is cleaning up our act today. Before the break, this kitchen junk drawer was a mess. But Pia has been helping us organize it with items that we already had around the house. Pia, bring us home. Okay, so here we go. All right, so taking these boxes that we painted, right, that are beautiful, and we're putting them into our drawer that now sparks joy because of the wallpaper, right? Mm -hmm. So put them all in. Okay. I'm gonna help okay, you out. thank you, Gail. Girl, your piles are magnificent. I just yes. want to say, I, I would like to intern for you. I'm really, <laughs> I had a lot of fun doing this. Awesome. Oh, wait. And we fill, I filled, I took all the tiny things and put them in the ice cube tray. So, like thumbtacks and loose change, which is like lying all over our house, and thimbles and et cetera. Beautiful. Beautiful. Let's see if I can put that. You need also a part-time job. Yeah, yeah it do. Do. absolutely yeah. is a game of Tetris. Sure. Okay, perfect. Love it. Okay. All right, so now <gasps> let's put in the larger items oh, first, okay. right? I've never so been you, happier. I know. This is so cute. <laughs> All right, so. You read right through Do me. we really need three scissors? Probably yes. not, right? So let's. <laughs> <laughs> so let's put in just one. Right? So that's how we declutter. We decide what we need, oh. what really sparks joy, and oh, that's okay. what so stays I just, in. I do this exercise, because I really would be like, but they serve different purposes. I will say, yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. the most beautiful. That's the okay. one that sparks joy. Okay, perfect. Okay, and that's what we'll do, category by category, step by step. We'll take each one that Gail has so lovingly categorized. Do you know how many kids I have? You know how many times I have to many? deal with pilfering hands coming in, stealing <laughs> all my stuff? I have to have, like, triplicates of everything. <laughs> 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 This is beautiful. Okay. At least Maybe I'll know when something goes missing okay. now. When yes. I <laughs> and let me just say, Pia, I so admire your work, but I also admire your story and your journey, like your personal journey of how you've organized in the world, but also you've decluttered your own life. Absolutely. Like you gotten rid of a lot of things that were not bringing you joy. Like tell us about that. I think everybody has to hear this story because it's phenomenal. And I know there are some of you at home that are so unhappy with your life. And I'm gonna tell you how I found joy in mine. So I decluttered not only a job, but also a husband, okay? Oh. 
Okay. Well, got rid of him. That's yeah. the he did not bring you joy. He did not bring you joy. <laughs> huge. Right? And, and so, you know, I started living in my truth. Mm -hmm. And so I left my career. I left my career, and then I didn't know what I wanted to do after that. Oh, wow. <laughs> after that, I was like, what am I going to do? And so I ended up seeing Marie Kondo's show, falling in love with her, I swear, in like the first 10 minutes, and I just knew that was what I was going to do. Wow. It touched my heart, and I left, mm -hmm. and that was it, and now here I am, you know? That's and so, good. you know, so I think that, that often there are things that remind us over and over again, we push those feelings aside. Mm -hmm. You know, we feel them and we think, you know, this, these happy moments will get me through, but really it's about being honest with yourself and truthful and looking for spark joy in all of your life as, as opposed to just your items. That's so wow. profound. Wow. I love it. And I think people don't realize the difference between like happiness and full on pure joy. You feel it, you breathe it, it, it glows from from inside out, like people see it and feel that energy because you're just joyful about things. And you can fix their drawers too, like you yes. are. And and you're sparkling the, over there, you got it going on. The, <laughs> enormous courage. If you'll yes. share with us, what has the freedom or the space you've opened up in your life created a way for, or created an opening for that is, bring, is continuing to bring you joy? You mentioned you decluttered a husband. I was like, well, she worked past the sentimental level. Like, you're like, you know, you're yes. like I went yes. all the way to the top. Yes. I, uh, but I, I'm so curious now that you've, now that you have focused your life, now that you have been able to create this space and this organization and, and found this passion and all of it is, you know, how, how do you continue to do that every day? Or is there something that is new to your life that is just magical because of the steps that you took and the bravery that you showed to be able to do that for yourself? Yeah. That's a beautiful question. So essentially the things that I have learned along that path, now I share with my clients. So the work that I do, yes, it's about stuff. And at the end of, our pro of the process, you know, your home will be tidy, yeah. but it's more about your relationship to clutter, your relationship to your external, your relationship mm -hmm. to your truth. So the process and, the, and the, the journey that I went on with my own truth is what I teach my clients, yeah. right? So is it true to you that you own, you know, this amazing, you know, uh, scissors, right? Which one sparks more joy for you? Is it this one or this one? And really think through that, right? Like when you open the drawer and you, you pull this out, does it make you feel good? And it makes you feel so good, you wanna put it back. You wanna treat it with kindness and treat it with care, right? Mm -hmm. So everything is intentional, everything is mindful, and everything is well thought out, yeah. right? So that you are, you are living in your truth every single day. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. How is that thing that's just beautiful. organizing? That is like so epic. I love it, that. It's fundamental and it, and it can seem small in places and then you realize it's your whole life. Your whole, whole life, life is the mm -hmm. strategy around something as simple as taking good care of your things and, and filling your life with things that do spark joy, which would be seeing the before and after of our junk drawer. <laughs> Let's take a look at what it was. All right, and look at what Pia gave us. This is beautiful. Wow. Beautiful. Yes. Gorgeous. <laughs> and it, it really is the little things. It. Like all the little things, the tiny things that seem significant, like they add up they do. to a much bigger picture. 100%. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So Pia, you also have a hack for decluttering kitchen items, which I think is something we all struggle with, from your cutting boards and plastic wrap, which do take up a lot of valuable drawer space, as well as pantry items like garlic and onions. What's this next tip? So this is gonna blow your mind. Wait for it. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So these mm -hmm. magazine on, holders. Yeah. Oh. Look at this. Yeah. You can get these. Yeah, you can get these for like you know a couple of dollars at the dollar store. And look at this. Look at the cutting boards just in here so easily. And you can even get garlic and onions in here, right? And look they how roll beautiful. all over the place. I love how this holds it so compactly together. Absolutely. I'm always chasing onions in the kitchen. <laughs> right. <laughs> and this would look so amazing on your kitchen counter. Exactly. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. it does. Very cool. Awesome. Pia, yeah, thank you job. so much for joining us, for sharing your story with us, for giving us this beautiful organization te technique and tactics, which I know we will all be putting to good use. Wishing you continued success and happiness out there and the joy that you deeply deserve. It's so exciting. Yeah. Up next, we are sharing our takes on stress cleaning and if we are guilty of it ourselves. And as we go into break, one last tip from the mom that loves to clean. Check it out. Hello, ladies of The Good Dish. I have another simple cleaning hack for you. I'm gonna show you a different use for a dish wand. Check it out. Add whatever cleaner you like to your dish wand and keep it in your shower. While your conditioner is doing the work, scrub down your shower. Now your shower is clean when you get out. Spring is in the air, and of course, we've been chatting spring cleaning. But before that, I wanna talk quickly about Gail's hair. 
Ooh. Gail, <laughs> is that by any chance the messy bun we just showed on the show last week? Why, yes, Daphne. <laughs> How did you guess? You know, funny enough, I didn't make the connection when I put my hair up in a bun this morning. And then I realized that was the inspo, that we were kind of channeling that segment that I sat and watched with your beautiful messy bun that I loved. Just throw it up, casual bun. It's actually kind of out of character for me. It's it took some convincing, gorgeous. but now I'm kind of digging it. It's funny how it much comfortable. the whole, we're not gonna go back into the hair up, hair down conversation, but it is <laughs> funny how much like your hair is your persona and when you change it, it becomes a whole, you take on a whole new life. Yes. Do you feel like you were living an alter ego today? I do. <laughs> I'm living in the prairies. I've got my long flowy dress. It is springtime. The flowers are in bloom. Yes. Uh, yeah. And I'm a whole other girl. Well, sip that chamomile Looking tea. Good. Pull up a pot of honey from your hive. Um, okay, back to the spring <laughs> cleaning of the show. I have a question regarding the cleaning of your kitchens because obviously we all spend a lot of time there. Um, and you know, I, I'll speak for myself. I make a big mess in my kitchen. Do you feel like cleaning your kitchen is a stress relief? Is it a stressor? Mm. Do you stress clean your kitchen? What's that relationship like? Hmm. Well, I will say that I make a mess, but I always clean up. There is method to my madness. However, my husband is widely known amongst our friends and family as a major stress cleaner. He's very oh, good wow. at it, in fact, which is one of the reasons I love Great. him. Keep him around. Uh, you know, it's a, key, it's a key quality. He always says that, he's like, my vices could be so much worse, Gail, if it is. so true. Because it annoys me sometimes oh. that I am like in the kitchen trying to get things done and he is like rearranging the pantry and it's 11 o'clock at night and I'm, you know, like, can we just stop with taking everything out of the pantry this late at night? But then I realize he does it as a stress relief mm -hmm. and I appreciate that. And he's always like, the things I could be doing at 11 o'clock at night. Very fair. And if this is what you're stuck with, you know what? You're a pretty lucky woman, and he's right. <laughs> he is right. I can't disagree with that. I it, I do feel like it's funny because I'm not I'm not a um, I'm not a dirty person, but like I collect little. I feel like I collect little messes around my you know just more like disorganization and clutter. The one area in my life that I can I can't go to sleep if my kitchen is messy. Oh yeah. If no. there's a dish oh, in my sink, if there's like a mess on my counter, like I am so neurotic you about. Don't wake up to that? No, no that's exactly no. right. I don't want to kick. You, you got to start fresh that. every day. No. Yes, totally. And my, and John is really good. It's, he's methodical about, you know, mm -hmm. there's always that debate in marriages of like who loads the dishwasher best. I fully cede to John, you load the dishwasher <laughs> better. You can Ditto. keep doing it. Ditto. That's very interesting. <laughs> we all have three husbands that are good cleaners because mine does the same, like the basic stuff, putting the dishes away, countertops. He handles all of that. But then it's that moment where I just walk into the kitchen ever so often like a tornado, like these cabinets are so unorganized and I just take everything <laughs> yes. out and I clean mm -hmm. everything out of the refrigerator. And then my husband's like, mommy's in her mood. He's like, mommy's <laughs> in her mood. Everybody run and everybody runs out of the kitchen. But it's just like, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. And then it's like, Breaking point. I hate it all. Yes. And it's just like, I have to organize everything and clean. It's, I think it's a control thing. It's like, if there's something that's out of control in my life that I can't do anything about, I can at least control my condiments on the yes. side of, yes. on the door or the, how my tub, like if I can yes. control something in my life, that's what it is. But my cabin is in my pantry. But also once you get involved, you want to do it all. Like if you're like, oh, if I'm gonna get in here, stop. I want to do it. I, I can't turn it off until yeah. it's completely done. Yeah. So yes, like you said, mommy's in her mood and you better get out of my way because well, I'm not what stopping. What about this <laughs> issue? We have now noticed, uh, my husband and I, that our son who is not yet four years old has started demonstrating those organizational qualities. Um, if the pantry door is open, if he is on the other side of the room and sees it, he will run over. Mama, you have to close that door. And on the one hand, it's adorable, <laughs> but on the other hand, I keep feeling, oh no, maybe that's not good that he's like developing these like stresses or that it's sort of like, you know, some obsessiveness that he has picked up from us. And I think it's really good because he likes to clean up and that's a good quality in a toddler. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. also perhaps it's because he's like sensing it in us, the stress that we feel because we need to organize and control. Well, I think all humans look for ways to create order in a very chaotic experience. And mm -hmm. for kids, their version of chaos is obviously much more contained and smaller. So I actually think it's wonderful if he develops coping strategies early on yeah. for like, and this is so true, I'm as an adult, I'm learning this, an organized physical space around you creates such a better, clearer yeah. headspace yeah. internally. So I think, I mean, uh, look, I think t to what you've described, he sounds like he's owning a really good feature from oh, his okay. parents, yeah. not you a bad what? one. I've had, I truly yeah. hadn't thought of it that way, yeah. and I really 
appreciate that. Yeah. Let me tell you, I'm gonna drop my toddler off at your house, let yours rub <laughs> yeah. off on mine, okay? Because Chloe... Well, let me, the other ones is not doing it. <laughs> She's just like, mama, here's some stuff on the floor, there you go, it's all yours. But uh, I love it. He likes to keep it organized. Hey, we can hang anytime. Yeah, being for that sure. Kid. All right, now, we're not done yet, because up next, it's the good list where you can find everything you saw on today's show in one place, plus my secret to up in your salad wrap making game. Mm. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm here for it. Welcome back to The Good Dish. Spring is in the air and I am absolutely loving it. Earlier in the show, celebrity nutritionist Carrie Glassman showed us how to make these delicious, healthy wraps. I wanna give you a quick little tip. If, you if you're someone who likes a play of textures, a play of heat, temperatures, a way that you can make these even more delicious is actually just throw them on the grill. Mm. I have to say, I love the little bit of char mark they get, the heating and the crisping of the tortilla wrap. And the way that I like to do it is actually refrigerate the wraps, which helps them set together. Mm -hmm. And it keeps the salad inside cool, even while you get that crisp, warm exterior. Uh, it's delicious and a nice little way to upgrade your everyday lunch. Ooh, these I were like so it. good. They I really were. They were delicious mm -hmm. and the weather's perfect outside. So fire up that grill. That's okay. right. <laughs> and now it's time for the good list again. This part of the show always brings me joy because that QR code on your screen, you see it right there. I want you to open your camera app and hold your phone right up to it and it will take you to the recipes and more from today's show. And you can always head over to gooddishtv.com to get it all, mm -hmm. including, y'all know what the answer, what's for dinner tonight? You already know the answer. It's that pistachio crusted sheet pan salmon Yum. that we can't get over. Really oh. <laughs> It just looks like spring on a sheet and I'm so excited about it. We will see you next time for more good food and good food. Bye guys. Here I am again. Yeah.